Starting audio log 001. This is Dr. Smith, and the event dates of today is March 24th, 2021. Today I'm going to be dealing with SCP 076. Now, this case was just recently assigned to me due to the previous case manager's um, sudden retirement. We wish them the best, though they will no longer be able to uh, manage SCP-076. I have not had the proper time to extensively review SCP-076 file, but I did scan it briefly before I arrived to their site. Now it says here the species is Keter, and the object classification is deemed. Hmm, let's see. I suppose that's why I am being monitored by personnel through a two-way mirror. So, we should be okay there. Alright. Mm. Today's meeting is just going to be a quick examination of 076 just to verify everything that I have on their file for my record. I just like to confirm what I am handed over and like to make a visual analysis for myself. So, I will be reading over the file while examining and inspecting 076. I've been told that 076 consists of two components, which I can verify from initial reaction here. There appears to be SCP-076-1, which is a rather large, appears to be stone cube, encasing, well, a coffin in the center of a room, which, if I look hard enough, appears to be holding a humanoid creature, which I can verify from the file here as SCP-076-2. Alright, I'm going to start by uh, sanitizing my hands and putting on some gloves here. I'm not quite sure what this stone material is, or what the composite makeup is, and I would just like to be safe for my record. So, I'm going to set down my clipboard here, and grab some hand sanitizer. Quickly sanitize my hands. Okay. Alright. 
I'm going to grab a couple of latex gloves here. a quick examination of 076-1. Just going to be feeling around here. See if I can make out what kind of stone this is. Hmm. Seems to be metamorphic. I would like to try to chip off a sample towards the end here. Or maybe I'll do it at the beginning. Just so I can test upon departure later. And see if I can figure out anything useful about this stone catacomb for 076. As it says in the file, the cube seems to be made out of a black, speckled, metamorphic stone, which I now can confirm. Though, for my record, the composite is unknown. I will attempt to take a sample in a moment, and I will review upon a later date. Alright. Now, it says here all surfaces outside and within 076-1 are covered in a deeply engraved pattern corresponding to no known civilization. Now, I'm not sure if these patterns or markings correspond to any civilization as of yet since this is my first sighting with them. However, I did not bring my camera, but I do have my phone. I know it is probably against regulations to use my phone to take photos, but I'm sure it won't hurt to take at least one that I can use to try to review later with my system. See if I can match up any of these markings to any known civilization. Hmm. Okay. It says radioscope analysis indicates that the object SCP-076-1 is approximately around 10,000 years old. Hmm. By my calculation and first observations, I would have assumed that it would have been placed at an even later date than 10,000 years old, but that is something I will look into after this initial meeting. Now, it says that there should be a door located on one side that is sealed with a lock that is about one foot in diameter, surrounded in about 20 smaller locks in a circular pattern. Let me see if I can confirm. Just looking over to the side here. I don't see any locks on this side. Let me check over here. Oh, yes, here we are. There is one rather large lock surrounded by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two, yeah, about twenty smaller locks. Okay. Fascinating. It doesn't look like any key that I've seen in the past. I 
wonder how these are open. Okay. That's quite fascinating. It says here that, as of yet, none of the keys have been found, making this door impossible to lock once closed. Hmm. From what I saw briefly throughout this file, it is quite alarming, I'm sure. Sealing it would be a primary objective of this facility. I'll have to get a picture of those locks and see if there's anything I can find where we could potentially seal that off. Okay. Now, I'd like to grab a quick internal temperature of CP076-1. We have a internal thermometer here. I'm just going to do a quick reading and scanning. Oh my. Is that correct? This is calibrated. I'm going to just verify my reading here. Stand by. Alright. Uh, confirmed? I guess that makes sense. I shouldn't be too taken aback. Um, interior temperature of 076-1 appears to be 93 Kelvin, and that would make it about negative 204 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. I suppose it's like a cryogenic freezing of 076-2. How fascinating. Hmm. I look forward to exploring this a bit more in later date. Alright, let me just put that down in the chart. Confirmation. Okay. Oh, it says here that temperatures cannot be altered by any means, internal or external. Hmm. Oh, and then it brings up the coffin in the center of the room, which I can now confirm, and it's held in place and sealed shut by several chains of unknown make and substance which are attached to the corners of 076-1. Okay, I can kind of make that out, though it's a little foggy. I may need to use some light here. Okay, let's take a quick peek. I have my pen light. I'm just going to do a quick once over, see if I notice anything with my light that I may have not noticed with my eyes before. See if I can kind of see into the room a bit more and maybe take a closer look at those locks. Alright, let's see here. I'm just going to peer in. Alright, I can make out the coffin at the center of the room here. Barely, but I can kind of make out a humanoid entity in the middle of the coffin. Okay. I can kind of see the chains holding the coffin in place. Unfortunately, I can't seem to do anything with those locks at the moment, but 
I will try to look into that and see if that's something we could potentially close. To keep from any further accidents, we'll go over shortly. I do have some tools here that I would like to use to really quick investigate those markings or hieroglyphics on the stone. So we're just going to see if I can chip away any of this dirt and debris and make out more prominent markings for investigating. I believe that did help slightly for my record. I am able to get a better view of some of these markings than before. Seems like the debris might have been clouding them and making them look like different characters than what they were meant to. Hopefully this will help me deduce this later. some of that clean real quick and then I'll grab a photo of the markings in the lock. should be good. I am going to grab a quick photo, just checking the personnel behind me if I can. can't really make them out, okay. I'll just try and make Seems to be black in color, if I remember correctly. When I was reading the file briefly, SCP-076-2, I believe, has black hair. I'll verify in a moment. I'm going to take a photo. 
take this as a sample and see if I can get a DNA makeup of 076 What a great find if that is what it is. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to grab some quick measurements just to verify what I have on record of 076-1. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get the measurements of 076-2 as they are the record says that they would be um, technically uh, I guess you would say past though due to the temperatures that I've just discovered I would say that they're um, cryogenically frozen alright um, I'm going to It's fascinating. It appears that 076-1 is about 9 feet in height. Great. And I'm going to want to get the width of the lock here. It seems like the main lock is about one foot in width, which is rather large. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Should be good. Just going to write that down in my file. So nine foot cube or three meters and about one foot or 0 0.5 meter in width long. Okay. Now, for the record, unfortunately, I'm not able to get a good look at 076-2, but the file says that they resemble a lean, semitic human male in their late 20s. Hair is black, and eyes are gray with an olive skin tone. I believe I can confirm the black hair due to the sample. I will get a DNA reading on that and come back to this audio vlog. Now, subject is believed to be 1.96 meters, or around 6 feet in height, and about 81.65 kilograms, or 180 pounds. They are covered in numerous tattoos depicting arcane and occult iconography, and it's present all over their body. Ranges from subtle to openly ostentatious. Subject, when encased inside 076-1, is technically deceased. Hmm. Alright, SCP-076-2 will awaken effectively reanimating. Fascinating, okay. Complete with all vital processes needed to sustain a living human being. Oh no. Okay, um. Subject will then attempt to leave 076-1. If successful, 0R076-2 will enter a trance state and seek out the nearest human being, ignoring all other living things in the process. Upon coming into contact with living humans, 076-2 will enter a rage state in which it attempts to engage and kill 
all human beings encountered. Uh, to date, only the subject's death has been shown to be effective in ending these rampages. Okay, um, let's just see here. Okay, okay. All right, um, well, we're almost done. It says here that they can be in this deceased or cryogenic sleep for up to like 25 years, so I'm sure everything's okay. Um, let's see what else it says here. Um, 076-2 is often problematic due to its significant physical abilities. Subject has superhuman strength and speed. Hmm. I really wish I could make out this subject from the coffin here, but I can't. I can just see it in the center of the room and barely make out its form through the slightly transparent layer. Hmm. I guess I should count myself lucky if this file is correct. Alright. And although it's not invulnerable, 076-2 has shown a remarkable ability to ignore pain and shock, pressing on despite what would be debilitating wounds in normal humans. Prior encounters with 076-2 shown that they have the ability to rip through a or steel security door, clear over 64 meters of distance in three seconds? That can't, that can't be correct. In three seconds? Take multiple 50 caliber BMG rounds to the head and survive. Swat handgun and assault rifle caliber bullets out of the air. Survive over one hour deprived of oxygen before asphyxiation. Wow. What are you? Um. Most unusual ability, however, is the ability to apparently materialize bladed weapons out of nowhere. Slow motion video footage reveals that the blades in question are actually pulled from a Miniature dimensional rift described as a small hole in space. Okay. It says that there's footage of this happening, so um, for the audio log, I'm going to attempt to locate this footage and review it for my record. I would like to look into more of these supposed rifts or small holes in space see how 076-2 is able to materialize such weapons or blades. Okay, it says that the only way you're able to stop 076-2 has been proved by death of 076-2. Okay, the only ways that they've been able to do this have been Asphyxiation, crushed beneath a 13.6 metric ton piece of elevator equipment. Cremation through use of Thermate TH3 grenade placed directly inside 076-2's open chest cavity. Is all of this on file? I'm going to try to find footage of all of these incidences. I guess I should be prepared. Um. During the worst breach to date, containment area 25, which previously housed 076-1 and 2, was forced to detonate on site warheads at a last attempt to contain 076-2. Upon death, they remained putrefied rapidly until reduced to dust. Once they're deceased, SCP-076-1 in the coffin, they will appear in the coffin and then slam shut with great force and the lock will rotate, sealing it shut. 076-2 will then reform within the coffin, a process taking anywhere from 
six hours to 25 years as of now. Mm, okay. Well, that's concerning. So it seems that SCP-076-2, when done being reformed, will open the coffin at any point and then can get out of 076-1 and then will try to escape causing all of these terrible circumstances. Um, so we really need to figure out a lock to keep them in. For the record, I'll have to investigate that further as soon as I leave here. Move 076's case to the top of my list. We're going to deem this one a high priority. Um, all right. The analysis of 076-2 exists shows that Internal systems are highly different from our own. And then it says data expunged. Okay. We're going to try to get a higher level clearance if I'm going to be managing their case and see if we can figure out what this information was that was expunged. So it can help us in further containing 076. 1 and 2. It says they were discovered in Mongolia in 1800s by an archaeologist from England. All right. All members of the expedition were killed on the return voyage home. Okay. All right. I think that's all I need for now. Um, Okay. One last thing I would like to do is to try and obtain a um, sample of 076-1, the uh, metamorphic rock, to see if I can make out its composition. So I have a pick here and a hammer, and I'm just going to try and chip away a small piece. Um, I don't think this will wake up 076-2. I'll try and remain quiet. Come on, we're almost there. All right, good. Now. Just going. I think I have everything that I need for the audio log. I have a sample of the metamorphic stone. I have measurements. I have a picture of the hieroglyphics on 076-1. I think I have a sample of 076-2 hair for DNA sample. So, um, it should be good to go back and study this further. Um, okay. No. Um, and the audio log, it appears, uh, 076-2 may be opening the coffin. Um, we're gonna evacuate the premises. I gotta go.